So as uh, radio broadcasters, we are kind of inherently uh, uh, taught to uh, not like the FCC uh, because they put rules and restrictions on us, right? They but used to. Yeah, they used to, but now they they bigger fish to fry. <laughs> The interweb. The they, interwebs, they yeah. Want, they want to put rules and restrictions on every American. Uh, we say good morning to... Um, uh, Steve Burgess. Steve. Good morning, he, Steve. He's a computer and forensics expert. We've had him on the show a number of times talking about things like, uh, how do I get that porn off my hard drive? And, uh, <laughs> the important things. And he says there's no way to do it, so don't download yeah, it. So, so you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you better bury it in the backyard. Don't... T- don't <laughs> Tell her why is this stuff. Yeah, they've got special porn trained dogs to dig in your backyard. So <laughs> Steve that. knows this kind of stuff. Hey, Steve, good to talk to you as always. So uh, this ruling that was reversed from the Barack Obama administration yesterday that the FCC overturned, uh, what does that mean for, can we just start with consumers like me, you, uh, Jeff, everybody else? So... Uh, it, it's uh, somebody coined it as a trickle down internet, uh, which I, I think is pretty good. We're, we're going to find out what happens when the big companies decide what they're going to do. So, it, what it what it means is that there are no longer restrictions on what the uh, broadband providers can charge for different types of traffic or even to different types of organizations. So. What it means for me as a small businessman with a website that's hosted with a small web hosting company is that uh, if, if a big web hosting company is uh, if a, a big company has got enough clout to say, hey, I'm taking my 50 million customers if you don't give me a good rate, but my web hosting company has got, you know, a few dozen or a couple hundred customers, and so they've got no clout. So the web hosting company may say, all right, big company, we're going to charge you you know, one-tenth as much, okay, little company, we're going to charge you 50 times as much. If you don't like it, look for somebody else. But that's not very easy because half of the United States has only one ISP as a provider, and, um, and uh, 90%, I think, of the United States has only two, either one or two. So basically there's a monopoly, and uh, monopolies can charge what they want. So what it might mean is that uh, the services that you don't pay a lot more for, you don't get, like cable TV uh, or, um, you know, direct TV or satellite TV, um, that services will be bundled. As a consumer, you might be facing, okay, you can have a social network bundle or you can have a watch movie bundle or what have you. Um, and, or it could end up giving your, uh, charging your ISP a lot more and your ISP can also then charge you a lot more. So it, the... Broadband providers will be able to charge the prices they want, and they don't have to do it evenly or fairly. If by fairly you mean everybody has equal right to access. All right. So, are you saying that these days of you know having unlimited data on your internet at your home is is probably numbered? Those days are numbered be- without being yeah. charged extra. That, it, it, you know what? It's 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 kind of impossible to say, um, but. You know, most people who are techies and not part of Internet companies would agree with that. Now, there's a big movement, too, uh, from people that support net neutrality, which would be the majority of Americans. And I don't understand why the FCC did not listen to the majority of Americans on this one as opposed to a few few organizations, unless there was probably some kind of... um, consideration that was uh, put forth to the members of the FCC panel, but I was... I, <laughs> Consider, are you, are you, do I hear cha-ching, cha-ching in yes. your undertone? Yeah. Yes, I, I, you do, because when I, I, when I read, the, I, I'm reading stuff about it yesterday, and I'm hearing that, like, this isn't even, like, a, a, a partisan issue. I mean, like, four out of five Republicans uh, in the Senate don't even b- believe that this should have happened, yet uh, the FCC uh, in their panel of five people are like, okay, we're going to make this ruling and we're just going to rule three to two in favor. And screw everybody. And everybody coast to coast is going to um, just have to deal with it the way it is. So Right, so three, three people made this decision, but then again, three. So I'm solidly on the side of net neutrality, but... Um, but I think this is a philosophical issue, and not, so I don't think FCC is getting you know kickbacks under the table. I think these three guys were appointed 
uh, by uh, uh, the FCC is appointed, and they're not voted in, and they're not they're not bought in. I think there's a basic philosophy that, and that's why I, I kind of agree with the idea, and I think it's a funny concept of trickle down internet, although it's serious. The there's a basic philosophy called regulation bad, regulation good. The current administration is going after regulations. Also, uh, I, I think it's well known they're going after undoing anything Obama did. So I think there's a basic philosophy of regu- less regulation is better. And a lot of people concur with that, except those same people don't think that they ought to have to pay more <laughs> for Internet services and so forth. But I think it's a philosophical issue and not a buy-off issue. Yeah, uh, there are, are, are Congress people who have money contributed to their uh, election campaigns and so forth by various and sundry parties, but, and, the, and, and, and the FCC is approved, the FCC members are approved by Congress, I believe, but they're appointed... Uh, by the administration. So I, I think it's a philosophical difference. I don't think it's a corruption thing, honestly. But at what point, it, it is so frustrating because it's just, it's almost like this personal vendetta that the current administration has against the previous pre- uh, administration to just roll back, and roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back, no matter who's... Um, Who's even though if, if everybody's harmed in, in the way, like you got to at some point, how come somebody hasn't sat that back and then said, okay, what is the greater good here? And the greater good is people being able to access the internet the way they've been accessing the internet for the last ten years. Um, let's keep the status quo because it seems to be moving things along very well. Now you have this huge thing that has the potential to disrupt it, why would anybody in a leadership role think that that's a good idea? Wait, you're saying what are the benefits of changing it and going back yeah. on it, reversing if it? If it's not broke, yeah. why fix it? What are the benefits, Steve, that you see? Uh, well, you know, part of what has made the Internet... Uh, I used to teach a class to senior citizens on how to use computers, and what I said then and what I agree with now is that the Internet is the most democratizing thing in the history of humankind, bar none. And now it's being given control uh, by, by orders. The control of it is being given to organizations who are monopolistic in nature. That takes away from democracy, in my opinion. So, you know, I, I've got a small company. I've got a website. I do computer forensics. But so does uh, uh, Deloitte, right? Deloitte and Touche. Uh, they, they offer the kind of services I offer. Well, right now, in theory... We pay the same amount of money to let our websites access the Internet. However, if uh, the, the providers decide, I might have to pay ten times as much or have my website either be blocked, which is a rule that uh, changed just about ten years ago, by the way. You mentioned ten years. Um, blocked or, or throttled, which, uh, which came out of uh, Comcast, the most hated company in America, uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> lost a uh, lost a lawsuit about uh, throttling and blocking sites. Uh, it was based on BitTorrent uh, at first, but um, yeah. So there, there's going to be less protection for small companies and consumers. All right, Steve uh, Burgess joins us. He's a computer forensic expert. It's Jeff and Jeremy. We've got Matt Cross sitting in here today as well. Uh, wh- wh- when do you see this next phase happening? Obviously, the vote just happened. When do we start to feel this? Do you feel how long will that take? Well, uh, until the uh, lawsuits shake out. New York's already suing them, I think. I was going to say, California. a lot of attorneys have come, come against it, yeah. Yeah, the, I, California and Massachusetts are against it, and, and that's Washington. a whole lot of... And the funny that, thing about this is, like, a lot of uh, prominent net forces uh, were against it as well. Google, Facebook, they're all against it as well. Yeah, it, it's a funny thing, you know. It says when there's some companies who have an opinion... Uh, uh, um, a reputation to uphold and key hang on to their customers. And, and a lot of them are Google, Netflix. I'm, honestly, I'm surprised Netflix opposed it uh, because they've they benefited in the past from it being um, neutral, but now they're big enough to uh, be able to make demands of uh, broadband providers, mm-hmm. and, and yet they're going on record as saying they're opposed, which surprised me, and I find it laudable. But... Um, 
I'm sorry, I just started talking. What, what was the, the, you asked why? You, you, no, you're, you're, we're wondering when can we start to see the these, effects of this. these uh, cumbersome things if, you know, the, the lawsuits go ignored or it gets tied up in, uh, for long term in, uh, in, court, in the court systems. I mean, is, is this something three to four years from now? Or, I mean, because it now is, they are able to do what they see fit, right? Yeah, so here's how I think it's going to go. I, I think that, you know, next year certain things are going to start to creep in and uh, hardly anybody will notice, uh, but uh, then there will be a, a lawsuit or two by people who are actually harmed by, uh, by the end of the net neutrality rules, and it will start out as lawsuits against individual organizations, which will then go for years. So, um, uh, and it's possible that in a couple of years we'll, we'll have a different FCC chairman, and before these lawsuits have a chance to shake out, the rules will be re-reversed. So um, the answer is, uh, you know, there are going to be shareholders for some of these companies that are going to demand uh, more money, more money, more money, and these things will probably start to change, you know, within a year. Um, unless these companies think that, uh, making the changes will make them so unpopular that uh, it'll lose them customers. But what choice do we have? We don't have a well, we choice. Don't, we don't have much choice. <laughs> the choice we have is to elect a, people who uh, will put a different FCC, at least a different person in place in the FCC. You know, the, the 2015 rules and uh, earlier rules, I mean, the 2015 just was when the FCC was officially able to regulate uh, uh, broadband as, as, a, uh, as a telecommunication service. So basically it's being treated sort of like it's a utility. And the argument of the broadband providers is, hey, we built this stuff. We have the right to charge for it or, or decide who has access to it. But it's now an essential part of life for practically everybody. I mean, uh, it's, you know, phones cannot, phones on uh, LDE <laughs> cannot take the uh, the place of uh, broadband internet access. Also, it's arguable that we already have so little competition. I heard this argument actually from a an, a, a, an up and coming small broadband provider uh, on the Central Coast that uh, you know the United States is not even in the top ten in either broadband access speed or in broadband access price. And uh, it's argued, and I think it's right that the the current situation is already too monopolistic, and there's no reason for the companies to increase the, the bandwidth. That they just want to make the money off what's already in place. And as a result, we're, we're falling well behind Europe and other countries uh, where broadband access is faster and less expensive. So in theory, uh, or at least it's argued that because of the consolidation of broadband providers, we're already falling behind. It's already anti-competitive, but this makes it even more anti-competitive in the eyes of those who are, are, are for net neutrality. And the, what the FCC is arguing is that it's going to be extra competitive and allow people to build out stuff, and, and that's where the trickle-down comes from. All fascinating stuff. Yeah. Uh, wicked scary. Way. It's scary, yeah. W that's the word way. I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, know if fascinating was You can't was just it, say, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to use, like, smoke yeah. signals and, Homer, you know. Steve, before uh, Ver pigeons. Verizon or Comcast or whoever uh, big entity uh, decides to charge your Internet provider uh, tons of money to have a presence on the web, what is your website so people can get a hold of you and, um, and access your uh, forensic uh, <laughs> services. <laughs> Why, that's BurgessForensics.com. Okay. All right, very nice. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate your time Thanks, as always. Dan. Always right. a, a pleasure. Bye-bye. All right. Well, I understood about half of that. It but was super interesting. I looked at the, our faces where everyone's just kind of like, oh, he's saying a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, he's super doomsday. Uh, uh, that's about, scary, I mean, dude. I mean, some of it is, but some of it is you have to have faith in, in mankind, humanity. hopefully, in, in, yeah. our, in our ability to realize that something is wrong and do something about it. Well, you know what? If I mean, if things happen drastically, there will be a change because people aren't going to stand for it because we all depend but on the, the Internet way too much. The scary part is... Way too much. They understand that. Idaho. They being the Verizons and the Comcasts of the world, they understand that, and they will... 
play the game. They will totally. They will slowly bump it up ten bucks. Yeah, fifteen yeah. bucks. Yeah. It's the it's the Netflix game that I talk to like, you about all the yes. time. I'm, I'm like saying, listen, Netflix is spending tons of money on developing their own programs. Eventually, you're going to end up paying for that. And what you get hooked into now for what seems like a great deal at ten dollars a, a month, well. At twenty dollars a month, you're you're gonna go. You're not ahead. gonna. Yeah, you're, you're like, oh dang you're it, gonna you're like, gonna okay, bitch about it. But, right. Yeah, I know. Next thing you know, you're like, God, I, I was paying forty dollars less last year. Remember a day? And, and we'll remember when stop. Netflix was ten bucks a month, not seventy eight ninety nine. I remember. I can't do my. You know when our cell phone questions. bills were thirty bucks a month? Yes, twenty nine ninety five. Yep, I remember that. Cricket Wireless. Yeah, that doesn't exist. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning.